What's up YouTube? In this lesson, we're gonna learn how to set color variables using Figma variables. This is probably the third time recording this tutorial because of some audio issues. So hopefully this one works out all right. Um, so we're gonna head over and deselect everything. We'll head over to local variables and we're gonna create a variable here, a color variable. And we're gonna set this up to be, we'll call it dark uh, forward slash one. So we created a folder called dark and inside that we have our first swatch. So we're just gonna sample this main background color here. And while we're at it, let's click on this collection and rename it and we'll call this just global swatches. So this is gonna be every swatch we use throughout our site. Um, we're gonna create another color variable here in the dark folder called two. And we'll go ahead and set this to be this dark card color here. And we have that set. Now, if we ever want to use this color at an opacity, it needs to be saved as a separate swatch. So we have these outlines here that we might want opacities of. I'm going to create a color variable here. We'll call this dark one and we'll call it alpha 20. So it's our 20% opacity. We'll drag it up and we'll use the same first color here, but we'll do it at a 20% opacity. So we have that set. Let's create another color here. And let's call this light one and we'll go ahead and set this to be this uh, font color and like so and let's create another variable here we'll call this light and we'll say one alpha 20 and we'll use this same hex code and we'll do the 20 percent opacity or whichever opacity we really want for the borders um, so we can create another color here and let's call this a uh, light two and this will be for our card whenever we're in light mode so we'll go ahead and sample this color here and once we have that set, we just need to set our different brand colors. So let's create a variable for color. We'll say brand uh, one, and we'll set this to be orange. And let's go ahead and set uh, another color. We'll call this brand two. And let's set this one to be the purple color. So once we have those swatches set, we can determine how we're gonna use them and start applying some context. So we'll create a new collection here and we'll call these uh, color modes. And we can go ahead and create a variable for this called color and we'll call this background one. So our main background for our section or page. Uh, we'll go ahead and set this to be this dark color here, but we can create a, another mode by hitting the plus sign. And so we have mode one and mode two. And inside mode two, we'll set it to be the light color for the background. And then we can create our second background color that we'll use for these cards when we're inside the mode. So we'll create another variable, we'll call this background two. And whenever we're in dark mode, it'll be this color. And whenever we're in light mode, our card will be this color here. And next we can set our font color one. And we can go ahead and set that to be, let's say light. And whenever we're in this mode, we'll set it to be this dark color. And we'll also have a font color too. Uh, we could have this be uh, maybe paragraphs at a faded opacity. Um, I'll have it be this icon since we usually set icon colors using font color in Webflow. So we'll call this font color too. And it can be our um, orange color whenever we're in our dark mode. And then whenever we're in light mode, orange might be a bit hard to read. So we'll just set it to be our dark color. And so that's font color one and two. We also have our borders, which are used for these pills and these outlines. So I'll create a color called border color, border color one, and we'll set that to be um, in dark mode. It'll be this light color. In light mode, it'll be the dark color. Um, and we actually wanna do this at opacities. So we can use the opacity versions of these like so. And then we'll have another version of border that's actually solid. So we could use a uh, font color for this, but that kind of doesn't give us a lot of flexibility. What we'll do instead is create a border color too. So if we ever decide to change this, maybe we say in dark mode, we want this border to be orange, but the font color to still be white. Uh, we have that flexibility if we separate border color um, from font color. So I'll just leave this set um, as solid versions of the font color for now. And the last thing we'll set is a text stroke so let's go ahead and set color um, we'll call this text uh, stroke uh, color one and for now let's go ahead and set it to be the brand color and when we're in dark mode or when we're in light mode we'll set it to be this dark color 
So we have those sort of variables set. Uh, next, we just need to apply them. So if we grab this section here, we can select the color and set a background color, and we'll set it to be our background one. And I'll just have this little uh, box represent that background just so we can see it visually. We'll set that to be um, background one. And then background two here, we can go ahead and set that uh, as our background two. Our font color one, we'll go ahead and set this. We'll do font color one. Uh, font color two can be this color here. We have our text stroke color, which we can go ahead and set under libraries under text stroke there. Uh, border color, so let me go ahead and select uh, this swatch here, and we'll set this to be our border color two. And then this one can be our border color one. And let's go ahead and set, uh, let's set a couple of these to be border color one actually. So it'll be this one, we'll use this, 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 this one and this, all our cards. We'll go ahead and add this in to be border color one, perfect. So we have that set and I'm gonna make sure this uh, text is linked to font color one and we have the background linked. So all that set and good to go and that means now we can grab uh, basically this whole section and click this by the layers and switch our mode to be mode one or it can be mode two which is light mode and you'll notice the font colors invert the border color inverts basically everything is switching uh, from just switching that mode like so so we could have multiple instances of this section on the page or different sections and we could have some that are light and some that are dark and we're only having to change um, basically that one thing on the section to change everything inside now we do have in some cases like We'll have this pill button here uh, filtered. We could just create that pill and just manually link it to um, basically background color one and then just switch the mode on this individual element right here and make that be mode two. And that's one way to do it. But if we were to switch the parent mode like so and we switch that to be mode two, then we'd have to manually come back and switch the child to mode one to get it to show up again. Uh, so what we can do instead is create separate modes for children elements. And what children elements really are anytime we change the font color of the section. So here the font color is light and it's also light when it's used on this dark card. So we don't really need a whole nother mode for this. Uh, but for this here, we would want it to change um, font color and border colors and everything associated with that. So we could create a child mode. Um, so we're going to come over to variables and basically we'll say parent mode uh, forward slash and we're just going to put all these swatches in that parent mode folder. So parent mode, parent mode, parent mode for this all the way through. And then we can go ahead and create a child mode. So I'll just create a variable called color and we'll call this child mode one. Um, because there could be multiple different things we want child modes for. Maybe it's buttons, maybe it's filters, different things we want to invert. And we'll just follow the same convention of like background one. And this applies to whenever it's inside this parent and the parent's dark, then we'll want this child mode to be the light color. So basically this is just going to follow that. And then here the child mode when in light mode should follow this. So we're just going to invert. Um, so we'll make this dark. So that's our background one. And then I would encourage uh, setting all these colors. So background two, even if it, it doesn't look like you'll need them later on, they could come in handy, especially if this changes from just being a little filter to maybe being a full blown card at one point or something more detailed. It's helpful to just set everything that you could possibly need. Um, so we'll go ahead and set the background two there. We'll go ahead and set a color for um, font color one and uh, oops that's font color one we'll set that here and that's just going to invert so that can be dark and this one can be light and this one can be uh, child mode one font color two and then we do have flexibility so it doesn't have to exactly match what we're seeing up here if we did want to change it so we do have this light mode here uh, font color two maybe just to demonstrate that it can be different i'll set it to be um, orange in both instances for font color two 
only when we're talking about a child that's inside of the section. Um, so that's our font color too. Let's set our other color here, uh, child mode. We'll call this uh, border color one. And we're just gonna invert, we'll do the opacities. So in this first one, we wanna do, I uh, believe this. And then here, we're gonna do the opacity here. I think we'll just leave it at that for now. So what I'm gonna do is copy um, all of this content and I'll just throw it in this card for now. And I'll select the card and let's go ahead and link its color to be our child mode background one. And we'll select this um, and we'll set child mode background one. We'll set this one background to be child mode background two font color on this, basically would link everything to the child modes. This font color one, um, font color two here. We want to link that to child mode and border colors. Uh, we'll go ahead and I'll delete this border color two and text stroke for now. Ideally it would have all the same stuff, but just for simplicity's sake. And let me set this to, um, add a min width and we'll say 200 pixels. Let me just set this to fill. So we get these kind of stacking and I'll bump up the min width so they push it over. All right, so something like that. Uh, let's select our swatches and let's just set these to be the border. Um, border, child border color there. So that way they kind of invert and that's looking good. And then this is all Let's make sure that is set. Yeah, so we had mode one applied here. I'm just gonna make that auto, so we're not applying a mode to this anymore. And now that child mode's gonna invert based on this section. So imagine we have two of these sections here, and we set the second one to actually be mode one. Now that child mode is inverting its background one, background two, font color, font color two, uh, borders all the way through and we're not having to manually change those children elements that we have within the mode So that's good for things that do need to change some things probably won't need to change uh, Like these button elements here can probably be the same color font color background color border colors uh, Regardless of their parent mode here. So for those we don't really need to make them children mode um, because they're independent So we can just create a new mode here mode 3 that we use for our buttons and stuff and we'll go ahead and set the background color to be this orange color here. Background color two can be the black at uh, 20%, so it just shades the main background there. Uh, font color can be light. Font color two will also be light. Um, border color one can still be light at the 20%. Border color two is solid. And then if we did ever decide to apply this orange color as a section, which probably won't do um, any children inside, that had child mode one will just go to being light uh, like so, and that'll be fine there. So we have that set, and that means that what we can do is take different button elements or things that we just always want to be a certain color. We can set it to be our background one, uh, parent mode, and then font color can be right here. Um, we'll set that to be font color one on our parent mode, and then we'll select this whole thing and under layers, we'll just set a mode on it and we'll set this to be mode three. So there it goes. We could have switched this to any mode we'd like, but we're sticking with mode three and we'll just leave it always be that mode regardless of what the parent is. Now we do have this purple one too. We could create a whole nother mode for just for the purple one, but really the only difference between these two is we're just subbing out the background color. Um, so what we can do instead is we'll just create another variable to switch out that color using only mode three. So what we can do is under our modes here, just create a new collection and we'll call this uh, accents and we'll create a variable uh, for color, call it uh, accent main or something like that. We could have an accent secondary that's like a lighter shade of the main accent if we wanted to do something like that. So we'll set its value to be orange by default and then we'll create another one here. Let's call this uh, let's call this accent one, and we'll call this accent two. And we'll set accent two to be this purple. So there we go. Our accent main can be either of these colors here. 
And then when we go back to our modes here, um, inside this, instead of just selecting brand one, it'll just be whatever the accent main is currently set to. So it could be either of those two colors. And we'll do the same thing for the child inside of that accent main. And honestly, we could do the same thing for our light and dark mode. So if we wanted more control over that, we could switch every instance of BRAM1 um, to be our accent main, like so. So we'll go ahead and switch that over. So we have that set there. And that just means that on any of these elements, we are already setting the mode. We can also add something for accent and choose between accent one or two. And that's how we can switch the color of this element, like so. And that setting can be applied to an entire section too. So we already are switching mode here. Um, we could switch um, accents like so. And so now you'll notice that um, we can choose the mode, light or dark. And then within that, we can also choose the accent to be orange or purple. And it's affecting the buttons throughout there. It's affecting the text colors that we applied. And the only time it wouldn't uh, do that is if on an individual element, we overrode that to be a different accent, like accent two, I believe, or accent one, there we go. Um, so if we override this on an individual element, it will ignore the settings applied to the parent, or we can set it to auto, and that way it inherits from the settings applied to parent. Um, so we have that there. And I think we also had what this would look like if this was a mode three kind of deal. So here we have font color one is black on this child inside of this mode. Imagine if this was like a filter and we wanted the uh, text color to match the background color. Um, to do that, all we'd have to do is to go back into our, um, our modes here. And then where we're setting our child mode, I believe it was font color one right here. Let's just set that to be our accent main. And now if we close that out, so now font color one is going to be whatever the accent color of that section is. So if I switch this back to accent one, uh, there we go. It inverts just like so. Uh, but we probably wouldn't use mode three on a section. It would just be for children inside of that section. But you can see you really get a lot of control over how things are going to switch and invert and how children components can work and different things like that just from basically controlling these different modes and accents. And the great thing about this is the Lumos uh, clonable is set up with all these same variables. So if you follow the same process, you can have multiple background colors, multiple font colors, but following the same process and redefining how uh, they apply in each mode makes it really easy to do um, different cool things, whether it be scroll interactions where the whole page changes color, or maybe the, when you open the menu, things animate to a different color. Um, but it helps once you define like what the color should be in each of these different modes, then it's really easy to animate from one state to another state because you're just switching um, between those. So yeah, I hope this tutorial was helpful and just a, like a high level overview of maybe a, a way to think about modes and accents and things like that in Figma. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I'll catch you in the next one.